back to another segment in our decking series. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Thought in this one we could talk, we touched on a little bit, but I thought we'd maybe talk a little bit more about just safety. And with, I guess with respect to safety, in my mind, what I, I thought you could expand a little bit on are some of those real key connection points in a deck build. And to me, anyway, it comes down to the ledger connection and then maybe that, that rail and guard post connection. So could we talk about maybe the, the, the ledger? And when I was a kid, kid-ish, right? I remember it was typically what, like a three eighths by four and a half inch galvanized lag bolt was something we maybe, sometimes maybe it'd be a little longer if somebody knew they had more stuff to go through, but that was kind of the default. And I didn't even know why, honestly, but that's what you did. And I know it's gone a long <laughs> way from there, so maybe you could touch on that. It certainly has. Um, boy, I, gosh, I've been doing this so long. I can remember when I first did it, I got mauled up by a building inspector because I was using lax. He said I should oh. just have that ledger nailed on there. <laughs> well, that has changed. Wow. Uh, and it, you're right. It used to be like a three-eighths or half-inch lag, okay. one per bay. So if you're 16-inch on center or two-foot on center, you'd have <sighs> one lag in there. Wow. And... Um, but part of the problem they were running into is um, uh, it's, it's about lateral sway bracing again. It's the deck pulling away from the house. Yeah. In other words, it, it's only as good as what you're hooked to. So you're hooking to the rim of the house. And if you think of the house as the framework of the house, the floors you walk in there, the rim of the house is, is like the rim of the deck. It's the end, it's the end piece. You frame up the, the house and you put an end board on it and then you side over your house. Well. That your deck is at floor height, so it's hooking to that the rim of the house, and a lot of times those are just nailed on. Somebody shoots them out with a gun, so you're you've got lag bolts into that, but it's just nailed onto the end joist of those. So the oh. whole pat whole strength of that isn't that great okay. necessarily. So um, depending on, on a number of varieties uh, and it ways people built over years, some of them would sheet over that. So the plywood was kind of holding it on, and, and some didn't. And, but anyway, they just got to where a number of failures had happened throughout the nation where decks would pull off the house, they'd be overloaded, big party, or it just been underbuilt, or it was just old and rotting, and, mm -hmm. and then it would fall off the house. So the way you hook to the house has gotten way more stringent. So, you know, you've got a, the joist hanger, the Simpson joist hanger that holds every joist on, but that's not really rated for pull away. That's all for shear action for dropping down. Okay. So uh, what they're so we're running in, depending on if you're using a lag like you're describing, or or a hybrid lag like something uh, like a ledger lock looks oh, like yeah. a lag, but they're they're engineered yeah. where they're you don't have to pre-drill them. You can you run more in, but they've got better hold part. A really nice in. product. Yeah. So it's a great product. It speeds things up. So you're putting usually three of those per bay mm -hmm. in 16 or 12 inch. So it, you've got your your ledger of your deck hooked to the rim of the house like nobody's business. And then the other thing we do now is um, you have to have some kind of a positive fastener that goes from your framer to the plate of the house. So your the house joists are sitting on the wall plate that holds them up. Okay. So rather than just depending on that rim that's been maybe just nailed, they're now also hooking some kind of a fastener periodically on the bottom of the deck that hooks to your framework and goes into the plate rather than just the rim. Because the plate uh, is is not just nailed on. It's uh, not gonna, you, you really rip the wall off the house to get it out of there. Is that where those tension, that's the tension ties come in to play? Okay. Yeah. They, yeah, they're, Attach they're, them to a deck joist and then fast them right. into the plate on, right. okay. And uh, I think code calls for like four minimum. If you look at the engineer we use, yeah. he's got them like every four or five feet, he says, they don't cost a lot and they're easy to put on. Yeah. And he'd rather have more on there because he's putting his stamp on it. Good so stuff. we put a lot of that on there. That's all about pulling away. Yeah. And, uh, and then you get into sway bracing because now, you know, now you've, pulled, you've taken care of the deck pulling away, but what if you're in an earthquake or something, the deck's going like this. So they traditionally we put like knee braces, post to beam knee braces right. on there. Okay. Those have gotten beefier and more complex. We also do uh, sway bracing on the bottom of the joist where we'll take a piece of two by six framework and put it flat, like at a V, come out from the house, say at a 45, uh -huh. to a point on the beam. And that's 
wood screwed into the bottom of each joist. So that deck is pretty well supported for both this and for pull away and for good. shear. The knee braces, do they kind of meet code and get you by? And then those other supports you're talking about, are those above and beyond? The, the, or is the, that all required? The sway braces on the bottom, the, the V base, mm -hmm. just talking about. Uh, some of the cities don't really require that. We used to yeah. do that all the time on a deck, anything eight feet or less. We didn't do knee braces, yeah. we just did that. It's actually stronger than a knee brace. Yeah. Okay. But most cities now require knee braces over four feet. Yeah. So, uh, but we continue to put those on where it makes sense. Yeah. Just because it's stronger. Makes sense. Okay. And it doesn't take, it's not a lot of time yeah. or money to do. Okay. The other one, I, as I mentioned, I wanted to talk about was the the railing post or the guard post connection actually to the framework of the deck. And you've been around long enough, you've seen all kinds of ways to do a railing post over time. Some that you probably would feel a little less safe than <laughs> today's methods. Maybe. Yeah. But where has that migrated to over time? Well, uh, code has, um, has dropped, jumped remarkably over the last 10 years. Uh, there's a, a load you got to be able to put on, a, on, the, on your rail. And as far as like pushing against a post, you're, okay. you're only supposed to get a minimal amount of deflection either direction, and it's a 200 pound load. Okay. So think of uh, the leverage you get when you're on a three foot or 42 inch high rail. A lot of leverage there. So the connection at the bottom is way more uh, complicated than it used to be. Yeah. Um, there's You're running through bolts and things like that when you're talking about mm -hmm. wood. A cedar post, barely makes that code because to get to a 200 pound load it's got to test at 400 pounds before they say okay mm -hmm. it's it's rated for 200 pounds most cedar posts half the time it's going to split before okay. you get to 400 pounds but, gotcha but that's what you're doing you're, you're either bolting or the same that dttz bracket that simpson makes yeah. you can also there's some a way you can use that on that post combination for through bolts and looking yeah. at the framework yeah and i've even seen it where Basically, you've got the, the guard post just really blocked in inside the joist, just really super tight. And then a bunch of the structural Simpson screws going in a lot, probably like 20 screws. But again, prescriptive method passes strong. Right. If you're, gonna, if you're, well, if you're going back to permits, what they're going to want to see is, is way more than just wood screws. Even though if you put enough wood screws in there, you're probably fine. Yeah. But uh, they're, they're, they're looking for specific details. And uh, you know, a lot of rails are not just wood posts and decks. They're like aluminum rails are bolted to the top or the side. Oh gosh, yeah. So now you've got, the, usually there's some significant blocking that goes mm -hmm. on beyond and some L70s or L50s, L brackets that are Simpson, that are bolting all that together mm -hmm. so that they can run their, their, their lag system. How the rail rates out is up to the rail company to provide for making that code. Mm -hmm. But the blocking and all that that it has to hook to is by their direction and also uh, it's got to pass with whatever city you're going to, to yeah. as far as what they're looking for. Yeah. I'm really glad we touched on this. So, you know, if you're building your deck yourself, especially pay attention to that ledger connection, make sure you get it right. Rail and guard post connections. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you, sir. You bet. Thanks, Jeremy.